let's continue our discussion. This will be the last part of section 1.1. In error detecting codes, we have this term parity bit. This is an extra bit included with a message to make the total number of ones either even or odd to detect errors. For example, we have the ASCII, ASCII code for A, which is 000001. Is it? Uh, we know that the ASCII code is 7 bits. For A, that's 100 and then 0001. There are two common types of parity. We have even parity and odd parity. Even, even parity, we, we add one bit and that bit is either 0 or 1 depending on the total number of ones, current, current number of ones. Here, we have two one bits for ASCII 8 one two since we are using even parity we want the total number of ones to be even that's that is multiples of two like two four six eight since the total number of ones here is already two which is already even so we only add zero to maintain the even number of ones, which is two. If we add zero this here at the most significant bit for even parity. For add parity, we want the total number of ones to be odd, like one, three, five, seven, and so on. So we add one instead of zero. The example for ASCII code for T, which is 101, 01, We count the number of ones. Three, there are three ones. That, and three is even. Uh, I mean, odd. So, to get even parity, we add one here. To get one to the four to the number of ones. For add parity, we add zero since the total number of ones is already three. It's already odd. We insert an extra bit in the leftmost position of the code to produce an even number of ones in the character for even parity or an odd number of ones in the character for odd parity. In general, one, of one or the other parity is adopted, with even parity being more common. So we can use either even parity or odd parity to detect errors. But the most common is even parity. Now let's go to the binary storage and registers. Binary cell, this is the device that possesses two stable states and is capable of storing one bit, zero or one or information. Uh, zero or one of information so a binary cell a cell contains only one bit which can either be zero or one register this is a group of binary cells so it can hold more bits two three eight bits 16 bits depends on the type of register a register, with, a register with N cells can store any discrete quantity of information that contains N bits. Example, a 16-bit register with the following binary content. So this is an example of, we have here 16 bits. These 16 bits can be stored in a 16-bit register. Register with 16 cells can be in one of 2 to the 16 possible states. 
so for this 16 bit register contain 16 cells so how many possible states we know that for each bit there are two possible values 0 or 1 so 2 to the 16 since 2 times 2 times 2 it's equal to 2 to the 16 2 times 2 times 2 and so on up to 16 so 2 to the 16 possible states if there are 10 bits if it's a 10 bit register then the possible states are 2 to the 10 2 to the power of 10 if it's a 2 bit register 2 bit register so 2 to the 2 is equal to 4 so there are 4 possible states Two possible states. Where is my we have two bit register? If this is our two bit register, we can store here zero and one, zero and one, so the possible states are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 and that is 4 possible states or 2 to the 2 is 2 times 2, 2 to the 2 is 4 4 possible states 4 is a 2-bit register a digital system is characterized by its registers and the components that perform data processing a digital system it is characterized by its registers and the components that perform data processing in digital systems a register transfer operation is a basic operation that consists of a transfer of binary information from one set of registers into another set of registers so that is what composes a digital system it is just a transfer register transfer operation so we're just transferring data binary data from one register to another zero and point one illustrates the transfer of information among registers and demonstrates pictorially the transfer of binary information from a keyboard into a digital into a register in the memory unit let's try to look at figure 1.1 We have the memory unit, processor unit, input unit. So from our keyboard, we type the letters J O H N. We type J, we type O, we type H, and N goes to the control module, which converts converts the <coughs> Uh, which, which, how do we say that? Which arbitrates the processes, then gets the information from the keyboard, and then outputs the bits corresponding to that button. So, eight cells for the seven bit, and then the other one bit which is maybe zero. Eight cells since we know that a byte is the common, one byte which is equal to eight bits is the common size of information in digital systems. So the input register is an eight bit register. It contains the data coming from the keyboard then that will be transmitted to the processor unit there's four eight cells here these are four registers actually processor registers you know the processor contains a lot of um, registers 
that manipulates the data then here it is shown by this arrow the information is being stored to the memory unit this is just a simple storage this is just a simple example of how registers are being used to store information temporarily especially in the input side and the processor side the registers are used temporarily for the memory unit depending on the type of memory but we will learn later on that we will learn later on as we tackle on memories types of memories that the registers are temporary storage unit Figure 1.2 illustrates the process of adding two 10 binary numbers. Adding two bit binary numbers. The memory unit, which normally consists of millions of registers, is shown with only three of its registers. Excuse me. So, for example, 1.2, it is showing um, binary information processing. So it takes the memory unit is shown to have three registers how many bits are there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so each register here has ten bits <coughs> so from the memory unit operand one and operand two are being fetched then transferred to the processor unit it is operand 1 is stored in register R2, then operand 2 is stored in register R1. Then this data are being transferred to the digital logic circuits for binary addition. Transferred to this digital circuit module that performs the binary addition. The result of that operation will be stored into register R3 and then from register from register R3 the result which is called the sum is transferred back to the memory unit and stored in this register as simple as that binary logic it deals with two discrete values with operations that assume logical meaning true and false yes and no etc that will think in terms of bits and assign the values 1 and 0 that's how the author defined binary logic the author of the book Morris Mano and his other authors it's just there are two possible values in binary logic values or meaning can I be true or false yes or no high or low but in binary we represent them with bits 1 and 0 this is a binary variables and a set of logic operations Boolean algebra will be explained in detail in chapter 2. So it just tackle some of the basic logic operations. The three basic logic operations and or not, and or and the not. Truth table. Truth tables of logical operations are shown in this. But let's define first what is a truth table. Truth table is a table of all the possible combinations of variables 
showing the relation between the values that the variables may take and the result of the operation. All the possible combinations of the variables showing the relation between the values that the variables may take and the result of the operation. For example, for the AND operation in Boolean algebra, we're talking about Boolean algebra, not, not the common algebra. In Boolean algebra, we, we are dealing with these two possible values the two possible values that we have mentioned here it has two meaning true or false yes or no high or low one or zero so if we have to input x and y and we are going to perform the and operation zero and zero we are sold to zero 0 and 1 will result to 0, 1 and 0 will result to 0, and 1 ended with 1 will result to 1. Do you get it? Do you get it? The output will only be 1 if both of the inputs are 1. Otherwise, if either is 1 or both are 0, the result is 0. That's how the logic operation of AND is interpreted. Well, for the OR operation, the output x or y will be 1 if either of the input is 1 either or both as long as there is a one in any of the inputs the output will be one but if both are zero then the output is zero that's for the or operation for the not operation it's just an inverse of the input it is denoted as x x prime it's called x prime if the input is 0, then output is 1. If it's 1, then output is 0. You just complement the input. So those are the three basic logic operations and the OR and the NOT. Logic gates is our electronic device. It's an electronic device implementing Boolean function. We call them we call those circuits electronic devices as logic gates. They perform the boolean functions. These are circuits performing logic operations. We'll see some of the logic gates later. Examples of the logic gates. For AND, we have this symbol for the logic gate. For two input AND gate. The OR or gate and then the inverter these are the symbols for the logic gates in actuals in actual circuits these are only symbols in actual circuits they are composed of transistors we know that transistors are the basic building blocks of basic building blocks and digital circuits or even in analog circuits, analog and digital IC design. CMOS, we have EMOS and NMOS. We also have BJTs, BJT transistors, but these are less used we want to design ICs that are small we're gonna use this transistors NMOS and 
Imos or Simos collectively no, called Simos or Sisters. Let's go to voltage operated logic circuits. Voltage operated logic circuits. Example logic 0 and 1 are represented by 0 volts and excuse 5 volts respectively or 0 volts and 3 volts so it depends also on the technology that we are using it depends on the circuit the components that we use to create our digital circuit some use some use 5 volts as 1 or high logic high and some use 3 volts depending on the technology and for the logic 0 it's 0 volts for both we have here in figure 1.3 signal levels for binary logic values here it's using 0 to 3 volts there is a certain range where you can consider it to be in logic 0 or 1. For example, for the technology that uses 0 volts to 3 volts, 2 volts to 3 volts is considered as logic 1, the range 2 to 3 volts. And the range 0 to 1 volt is considered as logic 0. In between these values, 1 and 2, there is a transition. Transition occurs between these limits, so we don't know the logic value of the output if it's between this range. So we should avoid we should avoid it to be in this range of values. Let's explain the physical signal is in a particular range. It, it is interpreted to be either 0 or 1. So we already said. Let's go to the symbols for digital logic circuits. This is the symbol for the AND gate, two input AND gate, with the input X and Y, and the output is Z. Z is equal to X and Y. The end operation is symbolized by this dot in the middle, X and Y. Then two input or gate. This is the symbol for the two input or gate. Inputs are X and Y. Z is equal to X or Y. This, the symbol for or is plus, the plus sign. Net gate. It's a triangle with a bubble at the end. So X, and then the output is X prime, which is the complement of X. It's called the NAT gate or the inverter. Locking R here. It's inverter. It should be inverter. Then input output signals for gates. This is an example of showing the signal output signals for the gates. The in inputs are X and Y, so these are the outputs, the output of the AND gate with this input, the output of the OR gate given the inputs X and Y, the output of the inverter given the inputs x and y so if both are zero for the end it's zero okay let's let's analyze for logic gate for the end gate it is only one if both the inputs are one that's why it's one here and for the rest zero 
for the OR gate, the output is 1 if either of the inputs is 1. So there's 1, 1 here, so 1 here. X and Y are 1, so it's 1 here. Y is 1, even if X is 0, so 1 here. Then here, both are 0, both are 0, so the output is 0, 0. For the inverter, this is x prime, so we don't care of this y. This will only depend on x. x prime, so our input is x. So whatever is the value of x, we just invert it. Since x is 0 here, we have 1 here. 1, 1, so we have 0, 0. Then 0, 1, 0, 1. gates with multiple inputs so our logic gates our logic gates are not our logic gates are not what do we call that are not restricted to only two inputs you can have three or more inputs depending on the capacity or characteristic of the gate Gates also are hardware devices, so they have their limit. There's a limit to how many input it can it can carry. To still faithfully perform its operation as a logic gate. Here we have an example of a three input and gate with inputs A, B, C and the output is F which is equal to A, B, C or A and B and C. Then we have the four input or gate with inputs A, B, C, D and an equation, Boolean equation, <coughs> excuse me, G is equal to A or B or C or D. Research task, this will be done by the students. The students that ends that's all for section 1.1. The next topic will be section 1.2, which is about Boolean algebra wait, Boolean algebra and logic gates. Excuse. Session 1.1 is about digital systems and binary numbers. Session 1.2 will be about Boolean algebra and logic gates.